Hello, SD Hukon. I am John Leas, Director, and Program Director of Programming for the Convention, and I'm thrilled to have Richard Lloyd and Miles Taylor as my guests today, uh, two Doctor hey. Who online content creators from across the pond. Welcome, Richard and Miles. Hey, love to be here. <laughs> Great to have you. For those of you not familiar with Richard and Miles, they primarily focus on co creating content associated with Doctor Who, but they also create short films. You can find their work on YouTube at Richard Lloyd and Tailored Vision. Uh, links will be in the description. But instead of me giving you information about Richard and Miles, how about we let them share more details about themselves and how they got interested in online content creation and of course, Doctor Who. So Richard and Miles, I turn it over to you. <laughs> well, Richard, I'll, I'll let you go first. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, um... Well, yeah, I'm, I'm Richard and I'm 20 years old. Uh, I'm a Doctor Who fan, big Doctor Who fan. Uh, I got into the show when I was seven. Uh, and yeah, it was sort of my childhood and then I've sort of never, never really escaped that. Um, yeah, this just as, I suppose, as a sort of fan, first of all, and um, watching the David Tennant stuff, at the back end of David Tennant and um, into Matt Smith, that was one of my first proper era. Um, and, and then sort of, I suppose, towards the end of you know, the Matt Smith era is when I started thinking about YouTube and stuff and it, it turned into something a bit more about like creating stuff. Um, yeah, cause like, as a child, I dabbled with like figure adventures and things, you know, like taking photos of Doctor Who figures, making stories from them. And like gradually that turned into something like that just wasn't photos. Uh, it's like more stop motion -y stuff. Um, and so that was sort of where I started off. And then I guess like over the Peter Capaldi era, uh, it, it became more oriented towards sort of reviews and stuff, um, becoming a bit more analytical perhaps. Um, and then, then just into the Jodie West career now, yeah. Um, yeah, still still here, still doing stuff, <laughs> doing stuff with Miles, uh, doing stuff with myself. Um, just, just all sorts really. But yeah, I suppose in terms of YouTube, uh, one thing that I did last year um, which was kind of a, a sort of niche thing, was a, a series about the music of the current era of Doctor Who. So that's that's something I suppose at the moment. But yeah, um, over the past sort of six years uh, of YouTube, I've done it all right. <laughs> yeah, all sorts of stuff. Um, so, so yeah. Okay, fantastic. How about you, Miles? Um, it's a very similar story, to be honest. I mean, I started uh, as well during the David Tennant era uh, after having been given a Doctor Who Adventures magazine, which is like the kids uh, Doctor Who comic that we got in the UK. Um, and yeah, I was hooked ever since uh, and I've got a love for the whole show, classic, new, all of it. Uh, and YouTube sort of came about mainly... Uh, after doing some stuff with uh, animation and my Doctor Who action figures and things like that and wanting to put it somewhere to show people. And uh, yeah, it just spiraled out from then. And, and since that, you know, after gaining uh, an audience of people interested in the content I make, uh, gradually sort of done reviews and other bits and pieces Doctor Who related, as well as non-Doctor Who stuff, uh, such as short films, as you said, uh, which um, I've produced some of those with Richard. Uh, and obviously uh, our collabs as well so it's been um yeah doctor has been very much a part of um a big part of my life and a big part of my online presence as well i think um my youtube uh videos and things i mean they wouldn't be there if it weren't for doctor who really so so yeah okay great so take us through a typical video creation process how do you guys uh, think about ideas how do you do all the logistics involved uh, one of the things that I've tried to do since I became director of programming is to really emphasize fan films and particularly Doctor Who ones. I, was, I, I started looking for things to do at the convention that were a little bit out of the ordinary that other conventions don't do. And that seemed to be a, a niche little field that nobody seemed to cover, but there was a lot of great stuff out there. So I was wondering if you could take us through your creation process. Yeah, I mean, I suppose we've never sort of given it much thought, I guess. I don't know if you'd agree, Richard, but it's like we've Perhaps. just sort of gone ahead and, and kind of made stuff, really. Yeah. Um, but in, in terms of like the process for, for our collabs that we've done, um, it's very much a case of whenever we come to make them, we make a batch of videos that we can release. Uh, and uh, the both of us come up with 
ideas that can be suited to either channel um, kind of bearing in mind our audiences. I think our audiences are slightly different. I think Richard's audience is perhaps more uh, into the analytical kind of nitty gritty side of the show, whereas mine, I don't know, I've never really thought about it, but you know, they'll just be up for anything. Um, so, you know, we, we kind of bear that in mind, I suppose, but um, I guess we each come up with our own ideas for what videos would suit our channel. And then, you know, we, when we come together, um, we produce those in tandem, really. Uh, aiming to, I say, I'd say probably we do about, would you say three or four videos per sort of batch, Richard? Yeah, per, per batch, don't we? And we sort of, yeah, yeah. And laterally, we sort of tried to kind of give them an umbrella theme vague, mm. sort of like them around uh, the Christmas stories to release it you know, in, around December and Christmas. Mm -hmm. Or uh, we did a batch uh, based around the character options figures, like the ones behind me. Um, mm -hmm. or, the many behind him. <laughs> the many behind me, yeah. Oh dear. Oh, has it cut out? That's great. Um, ah. So uh, we've talked about how you go through your video creation process. Uh, one of the things that most people don't realize is just the sheer amount of work it takes to create a video. It's not as simple as, as, simple as hey, here, here's a camera, record, and then just load up to YouTube. What is all the behind the scenes stuff that you guys literally have to do? And how long does that process take, take you? Oof. I mean, uh, again, something we've not really, really thought about, but I, I'd say, you know, um, we, we've become more conscious of, of the quality um, over the uh, over the sort of time we've produced these things. Uh, I mean, we've recently started to actually sort of have a separate uh, device recording the audio. So there's a lot of setup now that goes into, you know, when we come to make a video. Um, it's not, it used to just purely be like, we stick a camera it down and just have a chat but now we do make sure you know we've got a lighting and everything like that and an audio and we're being very conscious of wanting to create a product that we're really proud of and that we're uh we want to put out and, and show just just how um how keen we are to produce something of high quality um but yeah i don't know what would, what would you say richard in terms of our sort of process um, yeah, I think I cut out there, sorry, but um, <laughs> apart from that, no, um, yeah, yeah, I guess it's just sort of spitballing really, isn't it, just just coming up with stuff, um, bouncing around ideas, uh, just just seeing what, what's what been going on and, and what, what we're interested in, what we want to do, uh, and yeah, I actually say, uh, trying to make sure it's uh, as good as an, an end product as possible, really, yeah, um, upping the ante each time, really, seeing, uh, seeing how we can push those boundaries, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, uh, I've been able to watch some of your videos over the last two weeks. Uh, for the from our patrons here at SD Hukon, I actually contacted Richard and Miles in December to schedule this panel slash um, recording, and so we were going back and forth uh, as to whether they can join us. But during that time, I was able to watch some of their videos, and and, that, and I totally encourage our patrons to watch both Richard and Miles's videos. They're very high quality, very well oh, thank done. You. Some of the discussions are absolutely fascinating. So if you really are a Doctor Who fan, please check out their, their material because it's definitely going to be worth your time. Thank uh, you. I know that burnout is probably not an issue for you guys because you have other things going on in your life. So maybe here's the reverse is, do you wish you could do more videos or do you think you're at the, at the right level right now in your guys' lives? I think... Um... Yeah, I think the amount we produce at the minute, I'd say, is like um, a, a good um, sort of quant um, quality over quantity, I'd say, because if we produced maybe perhaps too much, we the, the quality might uh, might decline somewhat. I'm not too sure. But like, I, I think that the fact we sort of do sort of batches, I'd say every two or three months, you know, it's not a, a very About consistent thing. Four or five times a year, isn't it? Maybe? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but, um... exactly exactly so i i think that the fact we sort of um don't uh produce an, an a huge amount means that what we do produce i think is is interesting and we're not i don't think we've ever had a video where we were sort of like what what, what can we do should we just try and get something something out you know just because i think we always produce something because we want to talk about a subject and we want to you know to get a video out we've never produced a video just because we need to i think i think i think that's quite a good uh a good method that's that's really worked for us because it's meant that 
the the videos are interesting and there's a lot of content actually in them i mean our series 12 video richard was like unedited i think two hours long as long wasn't the role we just sat there chatting about it for ages and (laughs) it was a nightmare to edit i'll tell you now but um we got there was some great stuff in it wasn't there yeah and just i mean it's basically just us having having conversations isn't it Mm. like as if as if that camera wasn't there just um, that's that's one of the one of the series of videos that we we sort of well a, a sort of a mini spin off of the videos we did was was some on your channel just called two doctor who fans chatting about dvds about magazines about something and people were like i, I really enjoyed just hearing you two you know waffle on about about doctor who because it's um i'd like to think it's quite comforting just just hearing people having a nice chat about something it's not a big political issue it's not a big you know uh, a, a massive world ending topic it's just you know an hour half an hour of just people chatting nonsense about this mad insane show that we just love <laughs> talking about so I, I think that's that's one of the the appeals for for hearing us you know like i say waffling on <laughs> yeah it, it's actually you bring that up because um one of the things i've noticed in my search for other youtube doctor who associated sites you guys are are kind of out there as opposed to everybody else most of the other ones that i see tend to be more critiques i watched this week's episode did not like it or the 13th doctor is terrible blah 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 this and that or the 12th doctor or the 11th doctor this or mm-hmm. the 10th doctor that you guys are more of a just more like homegrown true doctor who fans where you do discuss just hey you let, let's take an episode and just talk about it or let's let's compare all the doctors or even like the music of, of doctor who I really enjoyed watching all those videos. So how did that all come about? Is it just basically, uh, I don't know, is it just kind of like a, a natural thing or do you guys sit down sometimes and just kind of start playing off each other and it's like, hey, that, that would be a great idea. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, Twitters are sort of, uh, I guess the hub of ideas. We just always go back and forth, just chatting about recent topics and then uh, what videos we could do. but. I think it's it's interesting you picked up on the, the fact that we try not to be harsh and and uh, and you know uh, really sort of critiquing things from a, a, a nasty standpoint. Which there's a few videos, you know, especially like say Thirteenth Doctor videos, which are just filled with a lot of hatred. And we kind of wanted like the the first filmed collab we did was one about underrated episodes because we wanted to just show some appreciation for things that haven't got as much love. And, and someone off the back of that said, oh, are you going to do one on overrated episodes and talking about, you know, ones that you think, you know, don't deserve as much appreciation. But I, I sort of went, I, I don't see the, the value in, in, in talking about a, a topic, in talking about these, these episodes and sort of tearing them apart and, and, and talking I'm kind of waffling on here, but like nasty, nasty stuff. And, and I kind of want our collabs and our videos to sort of be positive and, and you know, bringing light to, to the best parts of, of this show, I think. I don't know if Richard can give a more coherent answer to that. <laughs> I agree with that. Because we've done a couple of things where we're, we're sort of talking about stuff that isn't particularly well regarded, like, uh, mm. say, or the Doctor of the Wood and the Wardrobe. But, um, you know, we, 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 I suppose we try and get a sort of balance there. I mean, literally, the Doctor Winner Order, we did a for and against between us. Um, yeah, but even in that case, I think you'd agree, Richard. It was like we weren't thrown. Well, I mean, I was the against, but I wasn't throwing bile at it for the sake of it. We were just, you know, having a laugh. I think. Yeah, it's all yeah. It's all, cheek. It's all uh, yeah, all fun. Um, so, mm-hmm. so yeah, I'd like to think that uh, yeah, that, that that makes us stand out perhaps from some of the other stuff. Yeah. But, okay. Great. Yeah. Um, since you began doing YouTube videos, obviously your your fans have grown. You've you've gotten more subscribers, uh, and maybe even word of mouth has gone out that hey, go check these guys out. How has your interaction with your patrons and fans changed from when you first started to today? Well, I mean, uh, I don't think either of us have sort of patrons uh, in, uh, for our channels. I mean, it's something that we've not we've not considered actually. I mean, I've not considered for my channel at least. I don't know about you, Richard. No. Um, mm-hmm. but uh, I, I suppose in terms of the interaction I mean, I, so we do things like Q&A's don't we occasionally yeah. I guess yeah you always kind of want to have uh, a sort of sense of interaction there 
Um, but yeah, it's interesting, I suppose, because when you are just starting out or, or whatever, or, or you're not as, as well known, I mean, yeah, I, I suppose that interaction does change slightly. Um, yeah, I, I, no, I can't really fit into words. Really. I mean, I think it, it changed in some sense when we went to um, VorpCon, which is a, one of the conventions over here in the UK, yeah. Yeah. because we'd never actually, well, I mean, I personally had never met any of our viewers in person and actually interacted with them. And it was just, it was a very surreal experience to have people actually coming up to you in person and going, I loved your recent videos or, you know, I loved your Sarah Jane commentary. And we were like, wow, th thank you for acknowledging us. And, you know, actually it felt, it was so bizarre. And I mean, to be doing this and talking to people in the, okay. the US, it's it's kind of insane it is mental to, you know yeah yeah how about you richard have you have any do you have any stories or any experiences similar to what was miles was talking about yeah because um, we, we went to that that convention together so we kind of got people people coming mm -hmm. but yeah aside from that i've had the odd odd person at other things as well um yeah just say hello and, and yeah it, it's always kind of you know you, comes out of nowhere you don't you don't ever expect that you kind of yeah you know, you don't yeah get there thinking oh that's gonna happen i don't know you hope it will but you know it, yeah it's always a nice surprise uh when, when yeah, it yeah. yeah 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 i mean like and just at random things as well like i've i've had like i was at um the christopher eccleston mm -hmm. panel like last year and uh just randomly like people youtubers turning up at that as well at an event i didn't even consider there'd be people who'd you know done youtube stuff yeah, and they're, yeah and there they were and it's kind of like you're not prepared anything you've not prepared a big speech to say thank you so much but you just sort of go well uh thank you so much for this and it's yeah no it's lovely and it's it's a really it's the positive side of the community i think it's just so nice to you know to to have that feedback and that interaction and and to know that what you're doing is is helping people as well i mean i've certainly had like uh, we did a recent competition um for to win a, a doctor who figure set um for christmas and um like the, the people who sent in entries for that also sent a little message just to sort of say you know in 2020 a year a year that was so hard for many people um they said that you know videos like ours you know doctor who videos on youtube really helped in that in that time you know that that sense of um community i think and um it was lovely to hear stuff like that um, so again, in my waffly way, uh, it's it's lovely to to hear any form of feedback, whether it is online or in person. It's it's just it keeps you going. So, yeah, actually, uh, you're not the first ones who I've heard this from as well, uh, especially in 2020. Um, there's other online content creators, not necessarily Doctor Who, who their fans also you know thank them for their contribution to helping them through a very tough year, whether it be because of COVID or personal issues. In some cases, it was just, you know, people suffering from mental illness, perhaps, that really gravitated toward these individuals. And that's why, as I said, that's what I like about your guys' videos is they're very positive. They're, they're very fun to watch without feeling as though uh, you're having a serious discussion, but in some senses you are. And actually, I, and that brings up a, another topic is I actually had the ability to watch uh, one of your short films by, by Benji. Oh. And I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the music that Richard put together for it. I enjoyed uh, your acting and commentary in the video. And I think it's the kind of short film that, again, I would definitely recommend to all the patrons uh, that attend SD Hukon to watch, because it's something that all of us eventually deal with, whether young or old or anywhere in between. And for me, it was a good friend of mine. Um, so I knew exactly what you were trying to portray in the film. How does an idea for a short film come together like that? For you guys uh well it's uh thank you so much for, I, I really appreciate uh that john it's uh it's just it's incredible to know that it's you know uh reached people on all parts of the world uh, and and it it's done so well it, it's insane how many views it's got i've no idea how uh, it blew up but um yeah no it's um i i mean thinking back to to where, when it came about it was kind of actually experiencing those things you know that the themes like you said that are mentioned in the film the, the themes of loss and the themes of kind of 
um, not, not just losing a person through through death or, you know, it, just losing someone in terms of a friendship or or a long distance relationship. It's it's all those different different ways where you do lose someone. Uh, and it, it was through, you know, uh, things like that happening in, in life. Um, I mean, we, we lost uh, a teacher of ours, uh, you know, a few few years ago. And, and it was things like that that really sort of got the ideas going in my head. And uh, yeah, from that, you get the, the scripting process going. I actually, did, I think I did a video on my YouTube channel about the making of it uh, and sort of going in depth into, into that. Uh, and then obviously approaching Richards because Richards, we've done not, like I said, as well as our collabs, we've, we've actually done stuff like video wise for a while, haven't we? Yeah, so we started off at school, didn't we? Kind of just mm. doing uh, similar sort of stuff. Just, yeah, sort of mm -hmm. promotional videos for the school. Um, mm -hmm. Funny little things, Christmas just videos. Like little sketches, yeah, yeah. Sketches, yeah. Um, so, so off the back of that, that was kind of what, what made me kind of want to get Richard involved. And uh, obviously Richard did the camera work on that and the, the soundtrack, which is bloody amazing. Uh, it's it's uh, very reminiscent of the of Sagan Akalola's music for Doctor Who series 11 and 12 and also sort of broad churchy um so yeah no it was it was great to have that as an extra element in it as well um and and it even won a little award which was also incredible to sort of have that recognition and um to know that it was it helped so many people uh, in a lot of ways and, and I still get the occasional notification of people you know like just watching it and uh and saying you know they really enjoyed it so uh i'd really love to do something like that again particularly with richard you know to um you know to promote similar similar messages similar positive messages as well yeah because right. richard i think we, we have got something but roughly in mind we've not uh actually done anything with it yet but um of course yes mm -hmm. yes yeah yeah <laughs> So there, there's a little little spoiler, little teaser. All right. Well, I, I certainly hope that you two continue to do similar type of work. As, as I said, it was a, a very well done film, and I really enjoyed it. And thank hopefully, you. with your permission, I actually would like to show it at the convention this year. Um, oh, thank place. you. So that yes, way, that absolutely. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and switch gears uh, for the to the elephant in the room, which is Doctor Who. Um, so you both have talked about when you first began watching Doctor Who. What's the very first episode that each of you actually did watch? Richard, I'll, uh, I'll let you take this one first. Uh, so for me, it was the first proper one that I sat down and watched and, and, and knew I was watching and was consciously interested in watching <laughs> uh, was the start of the series four. It's Partners in Crime. Um, it's like Miles, I'd, I'd basically got into it through the Doctor Adventures magazine that, that used to be around mm -hmm. uh, in the UK. Um, so I, I got an issue of that um, just a couple of, uh, of weeks after my younger sister was born in March 2008. Um, and obviously then the series came on right after that. So um, yeah, it, it was series four. But also before that, I, I mean, it's difficult now to remember exactly, but I think there were vague things before that like I'm sure that and my parents can attest to this that I was kind of placed in front of the screen for at least some of uh, Voyage of the Damned the Christmas before and I remember vague bits of it like the Titanic flying over the Buckingham Palace but um <laughs> but yeah I, I would say it was series four when I, I and that magazine when I actually um consciously was watching it that was the sort of the point for me yeah that, that I that I remember. How about two miles? A, a very similar. I mean, I, I wish there was a, like a linear kind of route of I started watching with this story and that's that's simple as that. But um, again, similar to Richard, it was kind of loads of different elements. It was the Doctor Who Adventures magazine, which I got, you know, when I was on a trip in London and I was like, what is this? This show is great. I, I love the look of this. Uh, and that was sort of around series three times. So, you know, uh, when all of those episodes were airing. Um, but I also got a, a big appreciation th uh, of the show through my cousin, who uh, was a big fan of it from Rose onwards. And he was showing me these these DVDs of uh, Castrovalva and the Mind Robber and Legopolis. And I was like, what is th this? Is 
this is great. These these are so cool. Uh, so he was a massive part of getting me into the show. Uh, but the first proper episode that I sat down and, and watched and was really excited for uh, was Voyage of the Damned. And uh, I mean, that episode has a massive place in my heart um, yeah. because I just totally... I vividly remember, you know, watching it. And, um, and it's weird. It's like, like Richard says, apparently I did watch episodes before that, uh, actually live like Rose. My, my parents said that I was actually in the room when Rose went out, but I have no idea. Like I must've been playing with my toys or something <laughs> like that, but I, I can't remember it at all. Uh, whereas, uh, vividly remember boys of the damned and sitting down to watch that. Uh, as opposed to the Christmas before, actually, when Runaway Bride was on and uh, my dad asked me, oh, there's a Doctor Who on today, Miles. Uh, do you fancy watching? And and I just would n I refused to because at, at a time, Doctor Who really did terrify me. It scared me. So uh, from going from that year of being terrified, not wanting to even look at it to suddenly the next year being so excited to watch it. it it's mad. And obviously, I've never looked back since. <laughs> I always yeah. find that like it's sort of frustrating in a sense looking back and thinking because obviously we, we were both alive when yeah came back it's sort of frustrating on the one hand thinking oh god if only I'd just been in front of the tv you know, <laughs> five six and seven missed yeah. out seeing those stories live but um, mm -hmm. yeah what a bit of math was. <laughs> yeah yeah my first experience with Dr. Who and I'm going to date myself here gentlemen is back in <laughs> 1990 1990 that was Ooh. my first year in college the wilderness years. Yes. <laughs> and, um, I was, I had a television in my dorm room, didn't get anything of a significance except maybe like the local stations and this public broadcasting station. Mm -hmm. And so my first experience was watching this ridiculous looking man with this multicolored scarf that seemed to extend forever <laughs> and these salt and pepper shakers with these giant balls on the sides and a plunger shooting oh. out of the front. And for some reason, they couldn't climb stairs. <laughs> so that was my first experience with Doctor Who. And it's like, you know what? This might not be for me. I'm more Star Trek, Star Wars fan at the time. So you're but, probably watching Destiny of the Daleks instead of Genesis. That's, that's probably what it was. <laughs> probably. But uh, fast forward to when the series rebooted. And I actually watched the first episode with Christopher Eccleston and Rose. Mm. And so that was my first then sit down if we don't count the movie in between. <laughs> so um, that's where really my interest in Doctor Who really began. And that's kind of where I started off my Doctor Who education and started moving forward. Which actually brings us to the next item I was going to ask you, gentlemen. Do you prefer old or modern Doctor Who? Very tough question. I mean, I mean, I don't know if you have a definite answer, Richard. I mean, um, I don't like picking between them, but mm. that said, <laughs> that said um, I, I grew up and I'm still growing up with, with the new stuff and still watching it. And so that will always win for me, I think, in, in that sense, not necessarily in a sort of objective sense of all. Yeah. I mean, it is better in certain senses in terms of like the production values and things, um, but I mean, you know, it's different time periods and you can't right. really compare in that sense. Um, but yeah, no, I've definitely got more of a connection to the new stuff but that said yeah I, I still am engaged with the old stuff i don't kind of watch it as much but uh when the, the collection of box sets come out um you know i, I i'm pumped for those and then watch through those and uh yeah i have an interest in that as well um what, what would you say miles I, I, i'd i'd say exactly the same pretty much like the new series will always have a special place in my heart because that was what you know i've i've watched growing up and like David Tennant is my doctor like no one can take that away from me he's my doctor uh and uh yeah I, I would say that I do have equal love for the both of them but if if I had to if you were taking one away from me and I had to choose it, it would probably be the new series because that has a very personal uh attachment you know I have a very personal attachment to that because of you know it, what it did and it turning me into the madman that I am today. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with you, gentlemen. I, I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Miles just stole my thunder for the next question. Oof. I was going to put you both on the spot. Who is your doctor and why? 
<laughs> well, as you said, I'd spoiled spoiled mine. Yeah, obviously, David Tennant for me. Uh, it's River you know, Song must have come into the room. So <laughs> she gave me a hint beforehand. Uh, yeah, David Tennant for me totally because, like I said, Voyage of the Damned and and onwards, and obviously, you know, I, I didn't just watch Voyage of the Damned and then Partners in Crime. I went back and you know rewatched all these these uh, these previous stories that he did and yeah constantly uh always my number one whenever someone asks it's david tennant uh a classic wise peter davison but we won't we won't go there time crash was uh, heaven for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how about you richard for me uh i would probably say well i have said before you know peter capaldi the 12th doctor um just in terms of like quintessential doctor nurse um but then again, sort of linking to the last question, I mean, it's such a niche answer to say they're all great or they've all got different things about them. But especially with the new series ones, they've each got like a special place in my heart. And like in terms of my life, mm -hmm. like David Tennant and Matt Smith are sort of, I suppose, like my primary school and secondary school. And then, and then sort of Peter Fowley, the end of secondary school, Jedwist Canal, a sort of university student uh, sort of thing. So like, yeah, they're all associated to you in different stages of yeah. your life. Like, Gosh, it's bizarre. I've never thought of it like that, but that's so right. Like it, they do sort of it, each of them are, are a stage of your life or a significant portion. Like I can attribute each doctor to how, I mean, that's how I do anything. When someone asks me like, when did you do that? I think, well, what episode was on around that time? <laughs> and I, I work it out through that. So yeah, that's bizarre. But you're right. It's uh, there's so much more than just, you know, this is the, it's like, no, this is a part of my life. It's, Deeply profound, but yeah, I agree on that. Yeah, yeah. For me, it my doctor has changed over time as well. For mm -hmm. right now, my favorite doctor is actually the twelfth doctor. Um, I may have started out with Christopher Eccleston. I felt absolutely fell in love with um, David Tennant. Loved Matt Smith, but for me, Peter Capaldi yeah. was a great doctor, and I think mm -hmm. he's vastly underrated. And he had been given one more season. I think he could have gone down as one of the best doctors ever. Oh, I'm totally, on. totally. I think season ten Capaldi is they hit the nail on the head. He's perfect. Like they a, a bit, a bit too much anger in season eight. Uh, a little bit uh, too hip, cool in series nine. But once you get into series ten, oh, I mean, they bang on. You know, the this sort of uh, tutor and professor character. Oh, I, I loved Series 10 so much, yeah. No, I agree. I, I always make the joke with other Doctor Who fans uh, that the more Peter Capaldi's hair grew, the better he got. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I totally agree. So by the time he got to his Christmas special, I mean, he was just beyond epic at that point. <laughs> uh, as far as old Doctors are concerned, which ones would you say is your favorite Doctor then? Well, like like I said, uh, Davison's Davison's my pick. Um, he because I I think in a lot of ways he's very similar to Tennant uh, in terms of the human qualities of of Davison. I think that both of them are very vulnerable and and uh, kind of like I said, yeah, human and and reflect bits of us. And I love that about the Doctor that you know he he or she is this big you know uh, godlike figure at times. And yet they are so similar to us and, and, and we are, you know, they, they reflect uh, parts of us. So yeah, Davison for me. I, and I think Keiji Ranjazani is just the best uh, regeneration story ever. So um, yeah, what a, what a doctor. And, but don't know about Richard, whether Davison's uh, anywhere near as, as high up on his list. Oh yeah. Davison himself, probably not so much for me, unfortunately, but yeah. Um... I'm leaving it. I'm leaving the chat now. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, strike um, the family. <laughs> I don't really have a, a favourite classic one, really. I mean, I would say from the 80s, Sylvester McCoy, uh, now those three. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Tom Baker is, is an obvious choice. Um, and then from the 60s, I don't know, I don't know they're, they're both great. Uh, Charleston and Hartnell. Um, I, I suppose, yeah, Hartnell is sort of the, the, the quintessential well, I suppose Tom Baker's a sort of quintessential doctor, but yeah. um, um, they, they all owe, owe something. Well, they, they all owe, owe something to both of those first two, I think. So, yeah, it, it, it's hard to disregard those those two. So, yeah, I've yeah. given four answers there. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think for me, uh, surprisingly enough, my second favorite doctor from that area is probably uh, the second doctor, Patrick Trouton. 
Um, I choice. always enjoyed his portrayal. I remember watching Wine Robber, it, just thinking that was absolutely genius. <laughs> so it, it and I, is, <laughs> and I definitely enjoyed his relationship with Jamie, um, how that progressed through uh, the entire length of his run, and how much of a good time they're really having. And I think that's something that the modern era tends to forget sometimes that it should be the companions are basically representing us, the fans seeing the doctor through their eyes rather than oh i'm falling in love with you and let's let's go uh to another dimension well who couldn't fall in love with david tennant though i mean <laughs> well they tried <laughs> <laughs> with the exception of uh dada everybody tried so <laughs> even captain jack even captain jack so all right so let's see now that we focus on the doctor let's focus on a more slightly more interesting sometimes character and that is the master who is your master go on richard um i would probably say missy michelle gomez for me um I mean, then again that they're all great i mean i i really enjoyed sacrilan recently i thought he was great um but i i, I suppose we're still so a bit too close to series 12 to kind of look at that objectively the bigger picture mm -hmm. um but but certainly from the first impressions yeah i i, I loved him i mean it's john sim was my first one and um yeah i i, I don't know i i, I yeah there, there are things about him i like as well I mean, they're all a slightly different take on it aren't they i suppose uh, i mean obviously they all owe something to delgado so oh, yeah. uh, classic ones um I, i'd probably say, say delgado but i think overall missy just because of the thing that the with the redemption arc was uh, different yeah. and interesting and uh, felt like it was treading new ground with the character. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally say Sim, I think well, Sim was the first master I uh, properly watched. I mean, no, technically I would have seen Anthony Ainley before Sim because I watched Castro Velva and Logopolis. Um, but no, Sim will always uh, have, the, the special place in my heart because of uh, his performance is just manic energy. I love it. Um, but as you said, it's got uh, Delgado's got to have a, a massive, uh, you know, massive hand for, for what he did uh, and creating this role. It was utterly amazing. It's mem mesmerizing every time I see him on screen. Uh, and I was actually showing my girlfriend like Terry the Autons for the first time uh, a few months back. And watching Delgado through her eyes and, and seeing her react to, oh my, this is the original master. And this is, this is the guy who, who you know, created this role. It, it was, it really kind of made me have a newfound appreciation for just how good Delgado is. So if it wasn't Sim, I think Delgado would, would get it for me because he is just hypnotic every time, you know, you see him on screen. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree with both of you. Uh, for me, it, it definitely is Delgado with basically Missy climbing over, trying to climb over his shoulder. <laughs> so, all right, so we've covered the Doctor and the Master, uh, but I wanted to get your thoughts on the current Doctor, the 13th Doctor. Obviously, a big deal was made about the fact that a female is going to play the role for the first time in the history of the show. We had us seen other female Time Lords before, so this should not be as a shock for us, but for some reason it was. How did you guys react to the role being cast uh, with Jodie Whittaker? And what have you thought about her run over the last uh, two and a half years or so? It's interesting for, for me because I'd spent so many years sort of saying, I don't think the Doctor should be a woman with no really, no good reason, to be honest. It was just because I'd been so used to the role being you know, uh, uh, a male. Um, but then when Jodie Whittaker got announced, when we saw that amazing reveal trailer of her taking the hood down, I, I just something clicked and I looked at her and I thought, that is Doctor Who. That is, that, that she is, she's the Doctor. Um, and from that moment on, I was so excited to see where she'd go and, and what Chris Chibnall would do with her um, and, uh, and what Jodie Whittaker would do with the role. And I think, in terms of her doctor, Jodie Whittaker herself is certainly my favorite part. Like the amount of energy she injects into that role, uh, you can clearly see she is having the time of her life in every scene that she's in. Uh, I just love what she injects into, into each episode. Uh, and although I'm not always sold on the performance side of things, I'm always sold on just every, Jodie Whittaker is giving it 110% and more. Uh, I think she's, 
uh, we're very lucky to have her in the TARDIS. And certainly uh, even outside the show of like recently, um, the, the stuff she did during 2020, a year when, you know, we needed the doctor more than ever. Uh, and, and the little video messages she recorded for people. I, I just thought we are so lucky to have uh, her in the role. So certainly uh, in terms of, you know, the 13th doctor, Jodie Whittaker, um, we're, we're very lucky to have her, I think. I don't know whether you'd really uh, agree on that, Richard. I think you probably would. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she's a great ambassador for the show. Um, she's got a, a very infectious sort of enthusiasm, both on screen and off. Yeah, I mean, also, also of course, with the uh, the rumours that she's leaving, which mm. out fairly recently when we're recording this. Um, I mean, I, I find myself, I surprised myself sort of um, reading those and thinking, oh, no, I, I don't want her to go. I don't want her to go. You know, it's too soon. Um, because I think for me, uh, yeah, w w what she's sort of brought to it perhaps a bit, a bit more is a, a bit more of a vulnerability to the character. Well, I guess more, more so in series 12, but more of a vulnerability. Um, but also just, yeah, that sense of fun and like in series 11 where it's an ensemble piece between her and the three companions and they're just having fun adventures and there's, there's not kind of a, in series 11, there's not kind of a big story arc for the Doctor, which is something that people didn't like necessarily. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I guess, um, yeah, she, she, she has kind of gone up, got on the ranking for me a bit, I suppose, in, in, in that sense and just... Uh, in terms of doctorness, yeah, I think she kind of does embody a lot of that sort of doctor equality. Um, you know, she's just so full of hope, so full yeah, of fun. Yeah. Um, and, you know, with the character being female as well, um, that just opens doors, opens up possibilities. And it, you know, it feels very inclusive what they've done with it, I think, and just, just yeah, probably more so than the shows ever. I haven't ever really felt. I love what you, you picked up on there about... about you know what the what she did in terms of actually being female as well because i think we all remember that uh video of a little girl reacting to the announcement of that jodie whisker is going to be the doctor and she's just screaming the doctor's girl and it's just it is the most wholesome thing ever uh and and i love that you know finally little girls have got you know a role model uh to look up to uh, and it's not it's not the companion it's not the sidekick it is the hero and they can be whoever they want to be because the doctor you know can be whatever um they want to be so i i love it i i think it's it's great and long may it continue because the doctor should be a figure for hope and and you know a hero um so and, and i and i think you know i know i just said that you know it's great for little girls to have a hero but little boys can have a hero too you know like i i i think that the, the fact that the doctor is a female now doesn't affect you know it's not like little boys can go well i can't see myself on screen because i had uh, a, a female hero on screen when i was growing up sarah jane smith and watching the sarah jane adventures growing up she was my hero i i loved that woman so much and i think that uh to all the naysayers in the you know little boys can't have a female hero to look up to that's just totally wrong because i had a a, a female hero growing up and then she was she was amazing so there we go right. what about your guys' thoughts on the companions i mean it's been a long time since there's been three permanent companions in the TARDIS. um what did you think about their characters and do you think uh that how did they benefit the show um uh, being brought in the way they did go on richard um I, I would say, I mean, yeah, a, a lot of people have said it's too many companions, you know, it doesn't work. Uh, I mean, that's sort of the, the kind of consensus of opinion, I suppose, you know, on the one hand. But um, I, I, I think it has brought a nice sense, sense to the show. I mean, on the one hand, of that, that inclusivity, of, of that fun, of this just being like a team of friends or people just traveling the universe. Um, and, and, and yeah, I, I suppose because it, yeah, it's, it's the most inclusive TARDIS team we ever had. Um, you know, with, with the most kind of people represented there in terms of gender and race and things. And um, I, yeah, I, I don't know whether necessarily they've always pushed that as far as they, they could perhaps or use it to the, the full potential. But it 
does, I think, offer to the stories and what we've seen is, is an interesting sort of interplay between them and an interesting interplay between, you know, who gets sort of paired up with who, um, mm-hmm. uh, how that sort of reflects how the plot unfolds. Um, yeah, I, I guess ultimately the caveat of that is it's, it's a bit more thinly spread in terms of obviously, you know, we, we don't have these companions now, uh, like when it was just one companion where it's their story and, and you get to know them really well and perhaps they feel a bit more fully rounded. Um, you don't get that and that's the cost of that perhaps. But ultimately I think, yeah, people that say it's too many also perhaps overlook a bit of, of that thing of, you know, because we've now got, yeah, or we have had, we did have um, <laughs> three companions there in the pilot. So there's, there's, there's more chance to see yourself and there's more chance to sort of, um, yeah, have a favourite if you don't like Graham, you might like Yaz or whatever. You know, there's, there's, there's different avenues there. Um, so that, that's that's what I say to that. Yeah, yeah, I I agree that it's it's. Uh, I mean, I I for one thought that there it, at times did seem to be too many in, in the TARDIS. Um, we didn't have like a sort of a Nissa situation, you know, when in the eighties you had Nissa, Adric and Tegan and Nissa got shoved in the TARDIS for three episodes because they just couldn't work out what to do with her. Um, so thankfully we've, we haven't had that. Uh, and I think in series 12 in particular, they did, like you were saying about pairings, they did get really good at splitting them up and having, you know, Graham with Yaz in one episode or, or, you know, Ryan and the doctor, and all that sort of stuff. I think they did improve on that. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think that the fact we've had sort of a, a fam unit has been a very interesting, you know, change. Uh, like you say, we're so used to having just the one companion and focusing on them. Um, but I'm very interested to see what, what's going to happen for, for series 13 with uh, whether it's going to be, you know, just Yaz uh, for a bit. And then we're going to get, is it Dan who uh, jumped? Yeah. Uh, whether it's going to be, you know, uh, the three of them straight away or whether we're going to get Yaz and 13 on their own for a bit. I'm very interested to see, you know, what they're going to do with Yaz, I think, because in Revolution of the Daleks, which we've just seen, uh, I think that was probably Yaz's strongest episode. So I can't wait to see where they take her without Ryan and Graham. I think she's kind of grown as a character to the point where she can be her own uh, companion. So yeah, I'm interested to see what's going to happen in that, in that sense. Yeah. Um, they just recently, uh, as we saw on the New Year's Day special, they announced who the new companion is going to be in the TARDIS for the upcoming series. For those of us here in the United States who are not familiar with his work, what can you tell us about the new companion, the actor who is going to play the new companion? Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm not really familiar with him at all. <laughs> well, 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 yeah, so, so John Bishop um, just completely from, for basics. I mean, I know him personally as a stand-up comedian, um, sort of the level of, I mean, I, I was going to say like Matt Lucas, but Matt Lucas wasn't really a stand-up comic. He had done TV uh, as in, you know, sketches and Little Britain and things like that. But um, yeah, I, I don't think it's just kind of unprecedented to have a stand-up comic in the TARDIS. But, you know, I think comedians um, can have uh, a really good at doing uh, the emotional stuff and, and have a great depth to them. So um yeah, it's it's very interesting because he's like I say, stand comic, um, you know, a bit of a bit of a presenter really, like Bradley Walsh. So, uh, I mean, I have the complete, I have complete faith in Chris Chibnall to uh, to utilize him for all his strengths, and uh, I think yeah, John as a person seems like a really nice guy. So, uh, I, I'm very interested to see what they do with them. Uh, it just just. It's, it's like I say, it's kind of unprecedented to have a stand-up comic in, in the TARDIS. I can't think of an American equivalent, um, but yeah, that's basically what it's going to be. So who knows what yes. they're going to do with that? Yes, when he wasn't as familiar with him, and was basically seeing him for the first time when he appeared <laughs> on screen, and then seeing the photos, I was like, oh, okay. And then I, I, I don't know if I'd heard that he like came from Liverpool or whatever, but then I, like, I watched a video of his, of him speaking and of his voice, and I was like. Oh, okay. oh yeah yeah <laughs> I, I i hope uh audiences from around the world will be able to understand uh mr bishop because he has a very very strong accent <laughs> well, i'm sure they'll, they'll work around that sure. yeah <laughs> all right uh if richard and miles were made showrunners tomorrow what would we see on doctor who 
Well, if I might take the chance to plug a little uh, series on my channel, uh, I've done a series of audio adventures uh, from, I think, 2018. Um, and they are very much my sort of concept album of what my Doctor Who would be if I was running a show. Um, so I suppose that, uh, if you want to go and check that out, because um, I've done a few of, few of those and sort of... Um, the occasional bringing back of a of an old an old monster but really sort of focusing on on uh, new stories and uh bringing in elements that i'd like to see personally like um a few historicals in there i did an episode with amelia Earhart, which i'm surprised that doctor who's never done before you know exploring her and and uh, a, a strong you know female role model so it was great to do one like that and uh yeah there, it's just loads of little flourishes in that series of audios that i've done which would kind of represent what i'd do if i was in the the uh the chair of power like uh, chris chibnall's in right now um and and richard's had a hand in some of those as well so it's uh but yes i don't know whether richard would do something completely different <laughs> I don't, know, I don't have a concrete answer to it. Um, but then again, there are things like in one of the projects I'm doing at university, you know, creative writing, there, there's kind of the bits of it in there. So like, I I think an interesting thing to do would be to go back. I mean, it's similar, sort of similar to Bill and, and the 12th Doctor um, in terms of the university setting, but really kind of drilling into that a bit more, maybe like having a university student, I mean, obviously I'm a university student myself, <laughs> Like that but um yeah maybe and sort of using that urban setting and like a city setting a bit more yeah. universal setting um something kind of really engaged with with that you know and with like with public transport and things and just because like that's one of the things i i like about the um well what we've seen of sheffield in the current era um like in, I mean, the woman who fell to earth. I, I love the aesthetic of that, like the the kind of dark night in the the city and uh, with the cranes and things. And the, the, I think that's why a lot of people said that it didn't feel like Doctor Who at first because it it was just so it? ingrained in that in that setting, and it was kind of it felt like a another drama entirely. It was it was bizarre, <laughs> but, but like yeah. you say, very interesting to see. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. It's something something like that. I mean. I think with, with Sheffield in um, in the current era, one thing that's let it down a bit is um, that they haven't gone back there as much for location filming. Like, like so much yeah. of the current, well, the current revived era is just like Cardiff, and like even when it's not Cardiff, it's still Cardiff, essentially, <laughs> and like Wales. Um, and and so I guess what what I would want to do maybe is is yeah, if if the budget was there, I would just try and just just really kind of use location a bit more like proper yeah a bit I, I don't know um so, something like that um yeah something kind of modern and, and sort of really engaged with all that sort of stuff right, and in terms of like my my doctor I, I mean i think in the current show they're probably going to do next if, if not the next one the one after or sometime in the future a kind of older female uh character uh actor as a doctor and um yeah i i kind of imagine myself that sort of thing um, I mean, it's sort of inspired by lecturers I've seen at university that that sort of idea you know p picking different bits of various eccentric people I've met over my life and just kind of yeah an old kind of cool female um it, it is <laughs> what I would I'd probably do with it but yeah no, no concrete ideas I mean, like I'd happily have seen a series you know like series 10 of, of just the 12th doctor being a lecturer because it was it was called the pilot so it was literally like the pilot for a new side of the show i'd happily have watched five series of just the doctor being a lecturer at a university and pushed into that a bit more yeah because yeah like that you know whether it be sort of sheffield in series 11 or, or university in series 10 or, or the, the setting i mean or coal hill in the capaldi era yeah. um it's always sort of there at the start but then it eventually i suppose inevitably as, as the companion leaves home and goes off to the other worlds it kind mm. of gets forgotten about and left behind a bit and, and yeah something sort of really engaged with that setting perhaps i i'd say that as well for if yeah. if i was sure it too that that's the kind of the the doctor who that works the best is it's the hot it's the john pertwee quote of you know there's nothing more frightening than coming home and sitting to your home and tooting back and seeing a yeti sitting on your loo i totally butchered that quote but you get what i mean it's it's the it's the the known 
being you know attacked by the unknown I, yeah familiar, yeah familiar. yeah, yeah that, that's a more coherent version of what i was trying to say there uh because i think that that's what davies uh russell G. davis uh his era of doctor who really did so well like rose is the perfect opener that you can possibly get it's it does everything right and it introduces the audience to this world in the perfect way so i think if i was going to do like my opening episode it would pretty much be rose because that is just the the way to do it i think uh, you know utilizing the settings of of our world and throwing in aspects of you know space well, this, is per- this is perfect now that the new showrunners have decided which direction doctor who is going to go in <laughs> and if this indeed is jody whitaker's last year who would you like to see cast as a new doctor? Ooh, Richard, have you got any ideas? Oh, we answered this, didn't we, in a QA and a fairly recently. I see, yes. Yeah, you came up with a few people. Definitely. Well, I don't yeah, know. I, I said um, uh, I had two sort of in mind, and, I, and I've sort of kept them in mind. Um, one of them being Ruth Wilson, who uh, I don't know if uh, you folks in America might know her from His Dark Materials. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Other, other show. Yeah. Oh. I, I think she, she just, in terms of appearance, she looks like the Doctor and, and a very different female Doctor to to the one we've had with Jodie. Jodie's obviously very bouncy and light and energetic. It'd be nice to have a Doctor who's a bit more sort of controlled and a bit more McCoyish, a bit more sort of... Uh, uh, manipulative in in certain ways but um a bit more on top of things as opposed to jody who's sort of on top of things because she's jumping around so much and she's just you know um <laughs> but yes it was ruth wilson and also gillian anderson who obviously won, yeah. you know, everyone knows from x files and and uh, other recent shows um there was a picture going around on on twitter at one point of her in a sort of a, a capoldi-esque um costume with you know a white shirt and a and a almost like a crombie oh, coat and i thought that that's Doctor Who right there. So I I'd say one of those two personally, and and for the personality, a bit more stern and you know maybe more Capaldi-ish, just because to contrast what we've had with Jodie, you know. Yeah. How about you, Richard? Any any thoughts? Yeah, I, I can't really think of actors now off, off the top of my head, but um, yeah, I think again um, an older older sterner female probably. Um, yeah. Old, older, cooler, sterner female. Yeah, I think cool, cool is an aspect to go with as well because we don't just want it to be like stern, strict. You know, you yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, thank you, Richard and Miles, for uh, the interview today. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm sure the fans um, will, uh, SD, the attendees of SD Hukon will appreciate you taking time to kind of talk to Dr. Who with us today and your creation yeah. process for your videos. Um, if you guys are interested and it's technologically possible, I definitely would like to st- extend an invitation to both of you to be virtual guests at our convention next year. We can talk about logistics later, but if it's something that interests you, please let me know because I think you guys are dynamic speakers. You're definitely great content creators. And I think our uh, patrons would definitely would like to have the opportunity to get to know more about you and see even more of your work and actually talk to you live. So, oh, absolutely. It'd be lovely to, to sort something like that out. Yeah, yeah. So, the other thing too is if you guys are interested uh perhaps we can do maybe one or two more videos uh before the convention in october of this year and maybe cover cover topic cover cover several more topics that we didn't have time for today Mm -hmm. of course yes and and thank you so much for for letting us uh talk to you john it's it's hugely fun to talk about doctor in any capacity so thank you no it's my pleasure i always i'm always looking for uh content creators who really are passionate about what they what they do and who produce really good quality material. I mean, I definitely want to share that with other Doctor Who fans, especially those here in America who may not know you too and should. So, <laughs> but again, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I'm going to go ahead and sign off now. Uh, SD Who Can- Con fans, uh, please check out Richard and Miles's websites. Uh, the, just, the links will be in the description. And again, thank you both very much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Bye.